Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast, superhero edition. Today we are going to be giving our review on Black Widow. That's right, Black Widow, the movie that just came out this past Friday on July 9th. And for that, we got our superhero man, Byron Mitchell, the captain. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing good today. I can't wait to discuss Black Widow. Before we um get into ba- uh, Black Widow, Byron, how did it feel that you saw it in theaters? How did it feel going to the theaters with a crew again for an MCU movie? Because there hasn't been an MCU movie in theaters since Far From Home, and that was in 2019. It felt great um, to get back into the theaters with friends and just experience this movie and just bounce theories and reactions off of people afterwards. It just felt great. It felt right. Yeah, right on, man. Right on. Cause they didn't have a movie in 2020. Obviously, that's what COVID happened. We were going to get Black Widow then, and it got pushed back to the date that we just got it. And Black Widow is the 24th film in the MCU. Wow. The 24th. And obviously, um, Black Widow set after the events of Captain America Civil War, right before Avengers Infinity War. So you're seeing what uh, Romanoff is doing um, before she reunites with Cap and Falcon and Scarlet Witch and before Infinity War happens. So, uh, first off, so Byron, without trying to be we're going to do as spoiler free as possible things might come out but let's just talk about the movie and bits and parts beginning middle end and what you thought about it and go from there sounds good so beginning you got we actually get the uh intro for like romanov's family if you've seen the commercial you've seen like red guardian and then southern lady and Florence, a fuse character as Natasha's family. And they actually are in Ohio, which that was a shock to us. Yes, uh, Ohio represent. Ohio representing. And it was talking about some science stuff. So I was like, oh man, they were infiltrating Patel. That was the first building I thought of. But so you see the beginning with that. You see how they get separated. You see how uh, Natasha gets inducted into the Red Room. This isn't any. Big spoiler stuff because everyone knows to be a Black Widow, you have to go through the Red Room, all that jazz. So then you go from there, and then you basically see our favorite U.S. diplomat, Mr. Ross, Secretary Ross, trying to chase uh, Natasha. And, you know, she hits him with the Black Widow stuff, disappears, things like things like that. And then you see the opening act of what some of her other family members are doing at the time and you also get an introduction of taskmaster so trying to not give as many spoilers as possible so you guys definitely go see the movie but that beginning thing were you uh were you shot like how did you like the beginning like seeing her family stuff like seeing the red room stuff and her trying to get away from off i, I like the beginning i think it was a good intro because it gave us a little bit of an origin origin story yeah. Um, in the MCU of Black Widow, I know a lot of fans have been clamoring for that, just like an introductory little story of the character. So I think that the beginning part was very well done, um, just showing her growing up in the Red Room, and then you know, her trying to. So I think it was, I think it was very well done. Right, and then she gets. <laughs> Spun up into this thing about going back home because um, she sent a package that involved where she's from and she couldn't believe what was happening. She also gets attacked by Taskmaster for the first time. And how did you feel about Taskmaster? I mean, commercial wise, he was the main villain. Um, When you see the movie, you'll see the tragic story of Taskmaster. But how did you feel about Taskmaster in this movie? Taskmaster was throwing hands. That first fight, good lord. Mm-hmm. I'm like, they were going at it. it you, from this comics, but you know, like Twitter. So you could just like see some of the stuff they were mirroring each other with. And I think it was a fantastic fight. Very hard hitting, um, very action packed. Great first fight. Yeah. And with Taskmaster, too, 
you're right. He does. He can mimic anything that he watches. So he can mimic any Avenger he's ever seen fight. The catch is, though, that Taskmaster can't mimic their, like, strength. Right. Like, Taskmaster can watch Hulk fight and copy Hulk's moves, but Taskmaster doesn't have Hulk strength. Or, like, Thor, things like that. So you see that fight. You see Natasha having to go back home, having to bring back family. She's constantly getting reminded that she is an Avenger and how, like, they're not all in speaking terms right now. So you have that part, and then you get to, like, the third act of, like, the big fights and, like, crazy stuff that we do not want to spoil for you. You definitely have to go see the movie to see what, so then we can, you can see what we were talking about. But, Fire, when you think about, like, it always, I feel like origin stories in the MCU, they always follow the similar thing. Yes. they. I think they're all, and the first bad guy is always a bad guy of, like, almost a mirror image of of the um hero in this case taskmaster was could be a mirror in the physical copy everything so it's like you always have that thing it's like the mcu you have the main character you get introduced to like the best friend family person there's always some like tech tech um person in this case it was the guy who was keeping widow off the radar and then like it, it they, all origins are pretty much the same in the mcu now that you mention it, they are. I never really thought about that until you said it, but they do follow the very same similar formula. But, I mean, it, it's been working. Uh, yeah, it's been working. I mean, just look at, I mean, Iron Man, the first person was Ebedias Day, like a dark version of self, kind of, and all the things I had. Uh, Captain America, Red Skull, mm-hmm. uh, Black Panther, Killmonger. Thor's first one was Loki. Uh, Captain Marvel's one was the uh marvel yeah like like, dr strange's one was a dark version of him like if you look at them they're they're the same it's the same formula for each origin story wow no that's crazy (laughs) (laughs) so you talked about the fight scenes did you feel like this movie had a lot um, more action than you thought it was going to happen? Did you thought it was going to be less action? How did you feel about the action? I think it had the right amount of action that I thought it would, because it's a Black Widow story, so you know it's gonna there's going to be some good fight scenes. In so I think all the fight scenes were amazing. There's one I was like, eh, well, mm, without spoiling, there's one that I was like, eh, it could have been better, but Otherwise, in that the fight scenes were great. What'd you think about the the cast? I mean, obviously, Scarlett Johansson is no stranger. This she's literally been Black Widow for ten plus years now, and but you had the newcomers. You had Florence Pugh, who I thought personally stole the show. Yes, she is very. That was perfect cast. Her character, um, she besides the Red Guardian, she's an comic relief in the movie and like the line says are just hilarious yeah she she was good florence florence Pugh playing elena belovia also a black widow because she went through the red room and then you had red guardian 2 david harbour who he was the original wasn't he the original hellboy i know that was um ron perlman i think he There is something have have to do with Hellboy. I can't remember what. Oh, he played Hellboy in 2019. Yes, he was. Yeah, the newest Hellboy. Mm-hmm. So he's no stranger to Syria, but he was Red Guardian. He was actually uh, funny. I can't say this, but he was always asking about if Captain America was thinking ever talked about him, and that that's a funny thing. And when he's locked up, if you've seen the trailers, and telling these war stories against Captain America. Mm-hmm. And someone checking him like, bro, that's not true. That was the wrong date. So you're calling me a liar? <laughs> <laughs> uh. So that was that was good. And like, if you've seen the premise, like Natasha reconnects with family, have unfinished business back home. They're going to try and go to the Red Room, shut it down. There's a lot of twists and turns. You know, when you're bringing a family that's been separated for the reasons they were separated, it's not all roses and petals and flowers. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of drama. That that one scene where they are finally reunited, it was, it was very heavy, and I think it needed mm-hmm. for the for the movie. Mm-hmm. 
No, I, I, I agree. And, um, yeah, then you get to the end. Obviously, you know how the MCU go. It's the big fights at the end and uh, the closure and things like that. And the movie ran about two hours and 25 minutes, uh, something of that nature. And then, yes, there is an end credit scene. So they have not changed. You have to sit and watch the end credit scene. And the end credit scene was crazy. Definitely don't want to spoil that for you guys listen definitely want to watch it if you haven't already just googled it on the internet because i know some people are impatient but what i will say is this is the first movie we've had with the disney plus shows now going and byron it's really looking like they are going to stick to actually connecting these disney plus shows to the movies don't you think yes with the in <sighs> came with, mm. <laughs> watch the end credit scene because mm-hmm. How do I say this without saying this? <laughs> it's connecting to a show. Yeah. Show. So they will be connecting the MCU with the Disney Plus shows. Which, I mean, that's finally good. I mean, they wasted the bag where they could have connected like Daredevil and all that's been in the MCU, but they got screwed because they were on the Netflix thing and Disney didn't care about their shows till they got their own streaming site. But I will also say, um, Byron, when we finished this movie, I saw another money opportunity because we got this movie where we saw what Black Widow was doing from now between Infinity War. You could, you could make a movie where you see what Steve Rogers is doing before he, before he reunites with Natasha. Like we still don't know how they reunited. Yes, and I thought they may have shown that in Black Widow. But you definitely could make a Steve, what was Steve doing between Civil War and Infinity War? Because that was the first thing that came out of my mind at the end. It was just like, well, you know Steve breaks him out and then he takes Bucky to Wakanda off Civil War, but you don't know when he meets up with Natasha. Like, after the ending, I'm like, oh, they they really wanted to. They could make a movie like what Steve was doing. Or do a Disney plus thing, but I don't think they're going to give Captain America five movies, because he already... He's getting a fourth with Sam Wilson yeah. being Captain yes. America. I, I didn't think Captain would get a fourth, but they're doing that, and I guess, um, Byron, what was, like, how did you feel... Like, this movie meets your expectations, because this movie has been rumored for a while. He finally got it. Like, how did you... Like, did it meet your expectations? I think it exceeded my expectations Mm -hmm. because i mean it was good enough that i saw it twice Mm -hmm. and the last marvel movie that i saw was endgame that's a big deal um we had um one of our buddies shout out to cedric Ware. he was even saying that he liked the fight scenes and this better than captain america winter soldier and that's a big uh, I'm not there yet, but that is a big. That's a big thing. If you're questioning if you want to see the movie, if someone's saying that the fights are on par and better than Winter Soldier, that, you're gonna have to check it out. I kind of agree with him because I did rewatch um, Winter Soldier mm. um, this weekend, and the fight scenes in Black Widow are hard hitting. There's literally one fight scene. I was like, I'm surprised there were no rumors of someone getting injured. Mm. Because that's how hard hitting these fights would up. And they definitely were, they were more hard hitting and than so I, I, I agree with that. They were they were just throwing hands in this movie. Like every one of them. Just hard to say that, man, because when you think of Winter Soldier, you go straight to the elevator scene. That that's iconic. That is, mm-hmm. but just oh man, that fight between Black Widow and Yelena, like oh, that is a fight yeah. where I'm like, I'm surprised no one got injured doing this. Yep, and we could talk about that one. That has been shown in the commercials. So that is a that was when she said, "Nice to t- see you too, sis." And yep. It's like oh well, that's how Black Widow sisters uh, meet up. Um, you also, I do like how this movie connected stuff. I won't say the thing at the end that connects, but 
Yeah. You finally get to know kind of what happened finally in Budapest with Black Widow and Hawkeye. Kind of. Kind of. You, Avengers 1 when uh, Natalia, Natasha was like, this is like Budapest all over again. And then Clint's like, yeah, you and I remember that very differently. You finally get to figure out what was going down a bit in Budapest. So that was a finally a good callback. Yeah, I, I, some of the callbacks they had to previous movies were really, really good. Like the whole Budapest Hawkeye thing. I think that was nicely done. Hope that in the Hawkeye TV show, we kind of get like more of his version of what happened. I, don't know. I do wonder how his yeah, because obviously, I mean, Hawkeye, now he'll get the show, and that'll be it for the original Avengers all having something. Um, but I w- it'll be interesting to see how he's dealing with his best friend gone and the future. We know Kate Bishop is going to be in the game. If anyone who knows Kate Bishop or has played the Avengers video game uh, knows that he's, she's basically next, she'll be the next Hawkeye, next yep. woman up. Or she'll be an apprentice, and so we'll have like new new group out there. So we'll see, interesting to see how that goes because it makes Clint's a family man. He's married and has three three kids. I was actually shocked that um, we didn't get cameos from a Clint or a Steve Rogers. I actually was shocked. Yeah, that yeah, it was kind of she's not seeing other Avengers in this because she's been in other, other Avengers like solo movies. She was in Civil War and she was in um, Winter Soldier. And Iron so, Man too. That's what hey, yep, and Iron Man too, because that's when she was first introduced. So it's kind of weird not seeing other Marvel like Marvel Avengers in there. Yeah. It was just her on her own. I know it's after Civil War, they're all separated, but yeah. it feels weird from the time gap because like she's on the run, but at the end of Civil War, you literally see Captain America breaking out everyone. So it's like, what was the gap between Captain America breaking everyone out to Black Widow um, reuniting with him? Those are some like questions that we have after going um trying to be spoiler free. But so I guess with this one being the twenty fourth, that means they're gonna and they have three more movies this year. Yep, Shang Chi, The Eternals, and then that Spider Man movie. And I know when this movie came out, people were so confused because obviously if you saw Endgame, uh, you know, Natasha made the ultimate sacrifice to get the Soul Stone. Yes. And, and I'm I'm just, it's not really a spoiler, people, but guys, she does not come back. So it, it's okay. They do not retcon her great sacrifice. That would tarnish her thing. So I mean, there would be no way they could retcon it since this was between Civil War and Infinity War. So there's like, there's no way that they could have on her. like the post credit scene because people were trying hey, to ask that's true the life and she was just like what no but there the it's there's mantles being tossed there's things being put at play and I mean man the movie was really good I have not seen it for a second time I know you already did and I plan on seeing it for a second time probably when in a couple weeks or so, because I do like seeing MCU movies more than once when they first come out, because you see more Easter eggs. And, yep. uh, yeah, my and, second time around, there's a couple more things I noticed this time around than I didn't notice the first time around. So where do you... um? So with Black Widow, where do you have it, like, in your pantheon of MCU movies of, like, recent memory? Is it is it potentially going to be in, like, your top... There's 24 of them, so, like, your top 15, top 12, top 10, even higher? Definitely top 10. Okay. I may push it top five. Oh, wow. I mean, that means sooner or later we're going to have to do our top five MCU movies. Yeah, definitely top 10. Okay. That, and I mean, it was long overdue uh, for getting it. I know people, if you weren't hip, uh, this actually got greenlit after the MCU saw the success of Wonder Woman because there was actually where Scarlett Johansson thanked Gal Gadot because if Wonder Woman probably fought Black Widow, probably would have been pushed back a little bit more. Yeah, but, I don't know if they would have given her a solo movie if didn't do as well as they did. Right. I think the thing that irritates some people too, like 
she was an uh, she's an original six Avenger, but Captain Marvel got the first uh, solo women's movie in the MCU before her. But that's neither here or there. They were trying to figure out like where they were going to put in the storyline. But yeah, now they have. Go ahead. I, I definitely feel like this could have been put out way before. Well, years ago, like I feel like oh, this yeah. could have been put out after Civil War. Like, I don't think they needed to wait this long to give her a solo movie. Absolutely, because after Civil War was Spider-Man, um, Homecoming, Doctor Strange, Ant-Man and Wasp. No, not Ant-Man and Wasp, because that came out after Infinity, uh, Infinity War. But yeah, uh, I think Guardians 2 came out um, after, like, a whole bunch of stuff came out after Civil War. And then we're like, oh, here we are at Thor Ragnarok, and then here we are at Infinity War. So it's like, they could have if they would have worked it in a way, they could have dropped this, but what it is what it uh is with that. Also, so, well, also we're talking about Avengers surprise. Maybe there was no like Tony Stark appearance. Yeah, because she was on Tony Stark side. So that's yeah, that's another weird one. I would say if this is going on the same time as Spider Man Homecoming, that would make sense because Tony was in that. <laughs> but no, man, Scarlett Johansson. I mean, she is the. She is the matriarch, like, of them. I mean, she's the top woman of the MCU, and she's also the first MCU actor or actress to be an executive producer on her movie. So that's a big deal as well. That is. Kudos to her. She's done amazing work as Black Widow. Yeah, she has. It's sad to see her go, because, I mean, she did. She was in Iron Man 2, Avengers 1, Avengers 2. Captain America 2, Captain America 3, Avengers 3, Avengers 4, now Black Widow. Like, yep. I'm probably missing some in between. I don't have the picture with, but she has been in Winter. Yeah, like all that stuff she's been in, it's been crazy. Like, she's probably been in the third most MCU movies besides Iron Man and Captain America. I think Thor would have the most when. Love and Thunder come out. Yeah. Because he's had four. Well, because he's never been in any end credit scenes because he's had four Avengers movies and four Thor, Thor movies. Yeah. Because, like, Captain America was in Thor, the second one. Like, when True. Good at it. Yep. Yep. And he was in Homecoming when they showed his video. He was the end credit scene for Homecoming. I forgot about those two appearances. Mm -hmm. Like, Captain America has been in a lot of movies, and so is Iron Man. But it is, it's crazy. It's going to be interesting to see now the women of Marvel continuing the thing. Because you saw Captain Marvel, she's getting her other movie. Yeah. Uh, and Lost, they're getting theirs with her. Uh, Guardians, we'll see what Gamora. So there's still very strong women characters in the MCU. It's just there are. the first woman Avenger who was the only woman part of that original. The original six. And also, I would say with the fighting too, it was very grounded because obviously Black Widow is very skilled and she's not like a super normal human. Like she went through that red room, did all those modifications, but he's still, she's a, <laughs> she's as normal as you can get in the realm of God, but, and monsters. So it's like seeing that grounded style didn't remind me of Winter Soldier. Like you're just on the ground throwing hands, no magic hammers or rage monsters or flying or anything. Nope, I, that's I think that's why Cedric liked the fights because it was no superhumans. It's just straight hand to hand combat. Who's a better fighter? Right. I am, man. Like it was a very good movie. It was well worth the wait. I definitely would recommend everyone going to go see Black Widow. I um, do too. I mean, also too, if you're part of the have more women star in MCU movies. I mean, money talks. So if you want them to keep having women starting the movie, you gotta you gotta see them. You gotta pay the money. Um, yeah, I think I, on Thursday ahead. night, I think it was they made twelve million on Thursday night. Um, yes, they've actually. I have it up. Actually, they've actually broken like all the several pandemic box office record. I think they've already grossed one hundred fifty eight million worldwide. In the pandemic, and 
it would have grossed more if it wasn't on Disney Plus. And I'm not going to say your guys' safety is your safety. That I wholeheartedly agree. But if you have a choice and you're good with going to a theater instead of watching it at home, I'm telling you, get your crew and go to the theaters. Do not sit at home and watch it. Get that theater experience. Yeah, but it is so great in the theater. Like when me and my brother went yesterday, we went to the Dolby um, Theater. Ooh, Dolby Atmos, that's powerful. Yep, at AMC, and it just felt, you could just, like, feel it, and it was amazing. Definitely go for the theater experience. I mean, yeah. There's also, it's cheaper. I mean, you can buy a ticket, like, you're already paying, like, your ticket, basically, what you're paying for Disney+, Plus. then you have to pay an extra $30. Like, I, I don't know why you would do that, unless your place is, like, super shut down still from covid across the world because i know united states is opening is basically opened up so like if you can i mean go there go to the theater buy buy that over expensive five dollars worth of popcorn get back just relax man like it was it was something and speaking of theaters with black widow now out byron is this in your top five three movies you've seen in 2021 yeah Okay, fair enough. I do have it in I do have it in my top five as well, but there's still literally a half a year to go and there's yeah. still three MCU movies. Which we will be there for. And we have Shang Chi, Eternals, and Spider Man. Yeah, I did definitely I think Spider Man has my most interest because of the way it ended, uh the second one ended. But Shang Chi is definitely up there. I think Spider Man only has is has my most interest right now because they're keeping it hush. I mean, there's been yeah. so many rumors about it, but we still have not had a trailer. And I know our luck after we record, they'll drop a trailer tomorrow. Right. So, <laughs> I mean, that's happened to us with like that happened to us with the Eternals, and but I've been so shocked that they have not dropped a trailer for it yet. I think they're. I think they're gonna. Milk it for as long as they can because they know that everybody wants that trailer. So they're gonna definitely milk it for as long as they can because they did like several teasers with the name. So you're they're 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 gonna troll us a little bit more. Yeah, because I think with the trailer, everyone just wants to know: Are all these rumored people in the movie or not? I think with the trailer, I don't think with the first trailer, I don't think we'll see like the rumored Toby or um, Andrew Garfield or Matt Murdock or Matt Murdock. Yep. Or Doctor Strange. Like, there's so many people rumored for this movie. I mean, I, I don't know. Is there anything you didn't like about Black Widow? Uh, without giving spoilers, there was one moment that was like, eh, I feel like they could have done it better. I think the only thing that I didn't like about the movie is. I wanted more. I wanted more Taskmaster. I'm not gonna lie. I wanted more fights with Taskmaster. There was not that. Besides, uh, there wasn't that many fights, and even the final battle with Natasha and Taskmaster. I wanted it to be longer. I felt like it was way short. Yep, you know? that is what I was. Yep, that's exactly the moment I'm talking about. I, when you have a final battle, you have to have. It has to be like worth it. Like we've seen them fight the first time and you basically Taskmaster whooped her ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that final fight scene between the hero and the villain. It has to do more. And I know some MCU movies where well, they're it's they're not not good, but they leave you desire for wanting more. Yeah, I wanted more of that. I wanted more of that, I wanted more of that final fight. I wanted more of Scarlet, like the family fighting together. Because I, I mean, the Avengers stuff. I mean, even Captain America and Black Widow said it in Endgame. It's like, yeah, we typically fight as a team down here. With when she was talking to um, Captain uh, Marvel, so I wanted them four to fight together because they did not. Um, they really did fight together. No, none of them did. Like, they don't. Think, I don't even think Black Widow and her sister fall together. 
No, they had the car chase, which was showed in the trailer, so that's not a spoiler either. When they were on their motorcycle, but they yeah. were back to back or like side by side, like they were all doing their own thing. But the premise of this movie, I mean, was like her family, like her for the Avengers, which was never really talked about um, in the other movies until now. So now you're just thinking about that scene where the original, the rest of the original six Avengers are mourning her death. And Tony's like, does she have any family? And Captain America's like, yeah, us. But now it's just like, obviously she did. And that family's not done yet. So there you right. go. There's going to be a particular member who's going to be going forward. We don't know about the other two, but a particular member will be involved going yes. forward. And it's almost like it's interesting because it's like they're all they're trying to replace the original six event. I mean, they I mean, they're eventually going to have to because, you know, everyone's going to want a fifth Avengers movie. So you I think fate. I think this is phase four. So I think phase yeah. four will lay the for that new Avengers scene. Because you already have technically Sam and Bucky, but now Sam and Captain America replacing Steve. Um, you have Spider Man, and we're supposed to get an Iron Heart uh, show. Iron Heart, yep. So those two basically replacing Tony. Um, you have Kate Bishop, who's probably going to replace Hawkeye. We have She-Hulk coming. She-Hulk coming. She replace Banner. Uh, you have Thor, Love, and Thunder. And you're going to have Jane being the new Thor, which I'm still not a fan of at all, because she was trash in Marvel, and then she left after Thor 2. And yeah. The money's truly Omega big. She wants to come back. Still not a fan of her, but it is what it is. Um, and then, I mean, Black Widow will get replaced, because obviously she's gone now so it's like yeah. it's it's those things so it's kind of like i don't know it's can those new can the new avengers because once the avengers 5 gets it down this world's gonna get set ablaze again yes because they'll just start we'll all just start speculating like what's it gonna be about who's in it like what can that cast bring bring people in if you're not a if you're not a diehard, if you're a diehard, you've been watching this stuff for almost like 10 plus years, you're going to go, but it's like, oh, I was watching because I like Scarlet, or I like her. Like, I like the original Avengers, like, yeah. I go for, like, Florence or Kate Bishop. True. I mean, but you still have Scarlet Witch, and Falcon, and Bucky, um, and Doctor Strange. So you still have those? So, I mean, fans of those people will be drawn in. Also, I guess also with fans too. Oh, and Captain big, Marvel. Yeah, so it was a big hit when Chad was passed. That was that was yes, a, that was heartbreaking in so many ways because none of us normal people knew he was like sick, except for like his immediate circle, which is the way it should be. Yeah. Up, so shout out to his immediate circle for keeping that under wraps, but it's tough, man. Because Eternals, like, that trailer dropped, and that whoever that Eternal God is is right. It's like. Now that Captain Rogers and Iron Man are gone, who leads the Avengers now? That is the question. Hopefully, we will be answered in Phase Four. Like that question was answered in Far From Home when Peter was starting to get anxieties. Like, so who leads the Avengers? Well, obviously, probably Falcon. Well, aka Captain America now. But does he? That's... He's Captain America, but he's not Steve. He's not Captain Steve Rogers. Which yeah. That lead, like he doesn't. He still has to work to get that presence about him to be like I guess when people ask like what do we mean by who leads the Avengers it's not it's like who is going to say Avengers assemble yes and, a big heroic speech to get the team together and if someone says Avengers assemble who like who's like that can't be the person where they ignore it's like I'll pick up like if this person's calling to assemble you go right a reason they had that all the way they held that all the way till Captain America had Mjolnir and everyone's behind it. He says Avengers Assemble. It's clear cut that him and Tony Stark were the two leaders of the team. Yep. So it's like, who leads them? Who leads them now? I mean, I obviously a pick would be Sam, but as much as I, I with all her experience, if she was on Earth more, it should be Captain Marvel. It should, because she is one of the strongest Avengers now. 
and she's been on i mean she has the military experience too and she technically from a chronological thing she is the second avenger quote unquote because captain america was the first and then right. captain marvel was before iron man because those are the like heroes that when um Fury's talking to Stark. He's like, man, you don't know what the hell has been going on in the world. There's a lot more heroes than you think. But no, that's what, and that Eternals question is like, damn, it really does. Them. And then Arnold's articles came out. And that's one too. I know this is a Black Widow thing, but it's still an MCU thing. That's another thing, man. Like that Eternals one, I'm really going to be like, where the hell have y'all been? They even said in the trailer, we don't interfere until now. So I really want to know what is so bad now. That you guys are in. Wasn't Thanos bad? Because he wiped out half the universe. Yeah, and didn't half of you get wiped? Right. Or or were you guys immune to the staff? Or did Thanos getting wiped? Did Thanos wipe in half of y'all? I was like, yeah, we need to step in now. I will say with the Black Widow thing, since it happened in 20, um, since this movie happened after Civil War, no hints at the next Avengers Big Bad. Kind of, I was like, mm, are we going to get a little hint about who the next big bad is? We do not know yet. No, I think that's another one of those questions that maybe throughout Phase 4 is, who is the next Thanos? Because, like, well, I guess they really started laying the groundwork with um, Captain America with the Tesseract. Mm-hmm. And Avengers 1, we see that. So I'm like, yeah, where, where WandaVision's done. Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier's done. Loki Black- will be ending this week. Loki will be ending this week. Black Widow is now in the books. Uh, you got Shang-Chi. I don't think the Marvel series What If is going to have any like, bad guy. But no. We're a couple properties in, and we still don't know when the next bad guy is or when the next Avengers movie is, because I say that because once you know the Avengers date when the movie is coming, you start preparing. Because then it's like, okay, I gotta make sure I watch these movies. I have to make sure I go to the theaters. We're just aimlessly just going to these movies like, bro, when is this paying off? When are they assembling? They said they have no plans for an Avengers film in Phase 4, so Phase 5 would be the earliest we would get um, an Avengers movie. I'm holding my hopes for seeing the potential um maybe an Ant-Man and Wasps and Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch's movie because people, it's been Kang is spoke supposedly in Ant-Man and Wasps and if they throw away Kang in a one movie thing, that's going to be a huge blunder on their part. Yeah, that's Someone who can be the next person because he's like, oh, y'all were messing with time? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta check y'all. Right. But, man. Alright, anything else about Black Widow, man. I'm so happy for my girl Scarlett. Everyone know me that that is my girl. Like, and Black Widow's actually one of my favorite MCU characters. Probably my second best character in the Marvel's Avengers game. Um, so anything else on her, her legacy in the MCU? Another original six member closes the chapter, and anything else? Um, I think the movie. Like I said, I think the movie was. Well, well done. I think it was a perfect ending to her character. So I think yeah. it was just an amazing movie. 10 out of 10, I would say. Definitely go see it if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it, go see it again. No, I I agree. Definitely go check it out in theaters. The theaters are safe. Um, I mean, they're doing everything. Like, buy your tickets electronically, ordering your food from your phone, and then you go pick it up so you don't have to wait in line. Um, and yeah, man, Black Widow was fantastic. I think it made it more fantastic having our Avengers crew um, yep. going together. And I mean, we're, our our movie crew is like the Avengers thing. You have members coming in and out and all of that. But once you have a couple of you guys, you go there, you, you get a row, enjoy the movie, get some food afterwards. And like you said, bounce, as soon as the MCU movie is over, everyone's already talking about what's next. Yeah, bouncing off predictions like that. That is the beauty of their weaving of movies. And yeah, I agree. Perfect ending for Scarlet. Ten plus years as a single character, she's put in so much work. Um, who knows? Maybe we'll see her in the Marvel What If uh, cartoon show on Disney Plus, or 
I mean, obviously, it sucks because we know what happened to her at Endgame. Yeah. Like Black Widow 2. I think, I mean, they could have done a Black Widow 2. If what had, ha- hadn't happened to her in Endgame, they definitely could have did a Mar- Black Widow 2. Like, it sucks because, man, that movie had me craving for another Black Widow 2. There's, some, there's still some questions, man. Like, yep. Uh, like, I'm just sitting there. I was like, how's this stuff going off the radar, man? And, and if you listen to Florence's funny jokes about the Avengers, they are hilarious. Yes, man. She has some good one-liners in there. Mm-hmm. She, she was fantastic. And who knew Scarlett Johansson was just the Black Widow family was out here just chilling in Ohio. <laughs> right? For three years. <laughs> if it was the Russos directing it, I would have got it because they've shot a lot of stuff in Cleveland. This, I was like, okay. I, I, we were all just sitting there and said, Ohio. We're like, huh? But now with with that being said, that is the end of our Black Widow review. We both highly recommend it. Byron saying 10 out of 10 in his top five movies of 2021, his top 10 in the MCU. We're probably going to add that to our December slate because December slate, we do end of the year stuff. So you'll definitely hear Byron and I's top five movies. I'm going to have to do maybe, we're going to try and focus on five, our top five movies of 2021. And by the end of December, where these other movies lie in the MCU. And uh, Loki is ending this week. I know Byron's been watching. I've been keeping up with it. It's, it's good. These um, these uh, Disney Plus shows have been really good. It's just, you know, I get salty because they act like the Netflix shows never happen. But yeah, I yes, I agree with that. They should have included the Netflix series in the overall MCU. But these Disney Plus shows, man, they, they're pro- there's, it's strange because like when I first heard about like these Disney Plus shows, like, well, can they equate? like movie storylines into like a six episode season and they have been doing very very well with the disney plus shows i'm very impressed with them they're also putting a whole bunch of money behind them yeah sure like because these are connected to the movies and you know they're selling the disney plus like especially now with mandalorian being on hiatus like they're they're selling disney plus so it's good on with them but yeah, I know this was a more definitely a Black Widow because she rightfully deserved her episode. Uh, next time we do a superhero review, we will be start covering our all of our stuff because by the time the next one, Superman and Lois might be done with their first season. And if you want to talk about a top tier superhero show to start off season one, that that is that Flash season seven will probably be over by the next yeah. time we start. Yeah, because they um, only have two episodes left for Flash. Yeah, we still have to talk about uh, Batwoman's ending. Like, we have all the DC shows we need to talk about and uh, what they're doing next, um, movie wise, with Rock saying Black Adam is done. And and we have um, Suicide Squad next month. So we got to get ready to review that? that as well. Yeah. I thought it was that September. It's like the first week of August, I think. Well, I guess we'll be going to see that in theaters as well. <laughs> So we got a lot of superhero stuff coming, and people forget Venom Two is coming out this year as well. Venom Two, I think that's next month as well. Yeah, Suicide Squad is August sixth. Yeah, so I mean, once it gets to August, guys, Byron, Byron's going to be busy. He's going to have a whole bunch of superhero stuff, and obviously the Naruto What If battles. But Byron's also going to have to start getting prepping for college football. Mmm, good buck, guys. I- Byron's about to get in his busy season. Yes. Uh, it's been a little quiet, but I'll, I'll be back, guys. <laughs> With that being said, Black Widow, top tier MCU movie, especially for a solo movie. Uh, as LeBron James said when he won his first title, it's about damn time Scarlett Johansson got what she rightfully deserved. The yes. Queen, queen of the MCU, Black Widow. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to Florin. Shout out to all the cast. That movie was great. See it in theaters. And yeah, once you see it, comment. Then we can talk about some spoiler stuff on Twitter or on a um we can talk about some spoiler stuff when we play Marvel's Avengers. Next stream we do, then we can start talking about the spoiler stuff. Yeah, we'll uh we'll wait. Give you guys a couple we'll give you guys a week before we uh give you guys spoilers because there's some stuff I need to I want to talk about. Yeah, so then we'll... Well, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll talk about spoilers on Marvel's video game next time. Scream. 
Uh, the next time we do stream that, it will be before War for Wakanda because we're going to have to probably preview that. But that's I'm awesome. so excited. The King is coming. The King is coming. With that being said, once again, Black Widow, go see it out. It's out in theaters now. You have it on Disney Plus. Don't get an extra 30. Uh, the Queen, Natasha Romanoff. And with that being said, this is the L7C signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.